Step zero, prepare the ingredients. In the six steps towards becoming an SQL Server Analysis Services Expert, we learned that the first step is to receive the data we're gonna work on in project and use them in our technical environment, which includes SQL Server and Visual Studio. Well, I know that you're learning SSAS and you definitely don't have any data. And you know that the next steps can't be taken and the work cannot proceed without the initial data. We also know that some of the friends are beginners and don't know how to run SSAS or create a project. So I'm considerate of these friends as well. Therefore, in step zero, we're gonna provide all the tools required to learn SSAS and then move on with the rest of the work. In step zero, we're gonna download some free data, AdventureWorks DW 2019 database together, restore the data in our system, discuss the tables of this database, facts and dimensions, and then learn the establishment and creation of an SSAS project. Then we'll practice the six steps on the same project and data. So, what's the solution? Don't worry. I'm right there with you until the end of the way as I've promised. And I've predicted everything. So trust me all through the way, okay? Now let's carry on with our training and see how we're gonna take step zero. Downloading the AdventureWorks DW2019 database. Microsoft has provided various databases for different versions of SQL Server and different objectives. These free sample have already been completed with some data and you can easily download them based on the nature of your work. OLTP, OLAP, or a lightweight version, as well as your SQL Server version from the Microsoft website. The version we need is the AdventureWorks DW2019, which is a suitable version for SSAS Works. This version includes the facts and dimensions tables. The dimension tables include the dim prefix in their names, and the fact tables include the fact prefix in their names. This version is quite suitable for those starting to learn SQL Server Analysis Services. And almost all the data requirements at the beginning of the training can be met through these data. So let's go and download the database first. We can download this database in either of two ways. You can either enter the address I've written here in the address bar. and download the file directly. Or you can easily Google Download Adventure of Works DW2019. I'll do the second. You see that the download link has appeared here, and we can start the downloading process. If we click on it, well, I've already downloaded this database, and you can see it here. After downloading the database, 
you can see that it has a suffix of dot back in its name. This suffix indicates that this file is a backup version, and you should restore it in the SQL Server environment. To restore the SQL Server database, you should enter the SQL Server environment and carry out the restoration process so that all the database and the tables inside it are restored on your system and ready to use and operate. So, let's do this together. All right. I'm gonna enter the SQL Server environment now. This window opens after I run SSMS. Here I should specify which type of database I want to connect to. I click the first option so I can connect to the OLTP. Hit connect in the end. You see a series of files here. My work is with the first one which is called databases. I gotta do some work here for the whole database to be restored. I'll carry out this operation step by step. The example we have here is called Adventure Works DW 2019. Now, the thing I want to create has a database I've given you. There's a backup file you gotta import into the SQL server. To import, Right-click on the database and select the Restore Database option from the options given to you. The next thing you gotta do is to select Device from this window you see here. Then, click on the button with three dots, and hit the Add button in the window that opens. After you click on Add, all you have to do to import it is click on your backup file in the window that opens. Do it with me, so we can go forward together. All you have to do is importing this database into the SQL Server just like I did. Well, as I said before, our database is called AdventureWorks DW 2019. We just have to click on it and click OK. After restoring the database, you should be seeing something like this on your SQL Server Management Studio. If you click on the plus sign beside the name of the database and hit the plus sign beside tables, you should see the names of the tables available in this database. As you can see, the tables in this database have been named with the two suffixes of dim and fact, those with the dim suffix being suitable for dimensions tables while those with the fact suffix are suitable for fact tables. Is the zeroth step over? The answer is no. Remember that we keep switching between the two SQL Server and Visual Studio environments, since each environment has been considered for a specific job. For instance, it is the first step where we're going to receive the data. We got to work with both environments. We got to load the data in the SQL Server environment, since the SQL Server environment is a place for storing data and working on them generally. And use these data as the data source for building the model in the Visual Studio, since the Visual Studio is the place where the model is built and implementation works are done. So we carry on with the zeroth step in the Visual Studio. After loading the data in the SQL Server environment, now we should enter the Visual Studio environment and define the data source. I should tell the Visual Studio that I have a database called AdventureWorks DW 2019 with some tables inside it and I'm going to perform the analysis on these data.
So we're going to make a connection to the SQL Server environment from the Visual Studio environment. Among the database we have in the SQL environment, we select Adventure Works DW 2019 and connect to it. Now we have access to all the tables inside this database and can easily do our work. But before doing anything in the Visual Studio environment, we first got to create an SQL Server Analysis Services project. So open the Visual Studio environment and create an SQL Server Analysis Services project as I explain. First, you got to run a Visual Studio. To run Visual Studio, all you have to do is search it in the Windows search bar. I write some of its characters down here. And you see that it's displayed in the results. I just have to click on it and wait for it to run. Now that it ran, create a new project right here by clicking on this option, which is create a new project. As mentioned before, various projects can be created in the Visual Studio. For instance, you can create web projects with ASP.NET or Windows application projects. So we should specify the type of the project in this section. For instance, when we want to create an SSAS project, we should strictly specify it. Now we need to create an SSAS project for our work. So we select this option, which is Analysis Services Multidimensional Project from the template list. Then we hit Next and enter the next stage. In this section, it asks us to choose a name for our project and a place to store it. I choose this name and this location. And hit Create. By doing this, an SSAS project is created for me. And the objects that appear in this section are the ones that are relevant to SSAS. Look here. There are the SSAS objects we work with and carry out our projects with all the time. You're going to see more of the tools from now on. Now, if you're in the Visual Studio environment and want to create a project from here, all you gotta do is to go to the File menu, click New, and then click Project. So you see that the same window opens for you, and the same thing we just saw happens. So I'll finish up this section, and we'll carry out the rest of the discussion. Let's implement the six steps in this environment practically.